Hello viewers and a warm welcome to the show today. As you can be able to see, I have the privilege of introducing a guest today. Her name is Nina Gikunda. Thank you, Nina. And now we're going to be working on a very, very simple fish dish today. We're going to be making some uh, buttered fish and we're going to be pairing that with a very simple cucumber and tomato salad. But before we begin, I'll of course introduce the ingredients that we'll be working with today. So for this recipe, you'll require one medium sized egg, about one teaspoon of cayenne pepper. You'll also require half a lemon and about two, ta two tablespoons of mayonnaise. You'll require some salt and a bit of ketchup a few gherkins and a bit of soy sauce to marinate your fish. A tablespoon will do for this recipe. You'll also require one medium sized tomato, one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and about half a cup of all-purpose flour. You're also going to require some chopped white onion and about 150 grams of tilapia filet. Lastly, you're going to require as well some fennel, a bit of coriander, one whole cucumber which you're going to be bunching up into a salad and of course, last but not least, some oil to cook with, some peppercorns to crush, and some soda water to make our butter in. But before we continue, we'll of course give you this chance to sit back, relax, and unwind, and we'll catch you after a very short break. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. As I mentioned, I'm going to have the privilege of hosting a very, 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 very important guest today. Her name is Nina. She has actually been here on the show before, but I managed to convince her to come in for one particular reason. And this is basically to show her a very, very simple take on some buttered fish. So we're going to start off this recipe very mm -hmm. simple, Nina. Yes. So you can grab the tilapia and the soy sauce. Mm -hmm. And we'll begin very simply by just marinating it very, very lightly. Okay. So I'm just going to add those into this bowl. Mm -hmm. And you can add your soy sauce in there. Uh -huh. So this I'm just going to toss in the bowl, making of course sure that both pieces are beautifully coated in the soy sauce. Mm -hmm. And this you can marinate for anywhere between two minutes, all day, doesn't Depends really matter. With what you want. Depends with the, the intensity of uh, infusion you want to have, mm -hmm. and of course the amount of time you have before you actually cook it. Okay. So very, very simple. Mm -hmm. We're just going to let that sit at the back. And now next up, we're going to make this very simple butter. Mm -hmm. So you can grab the flour. Thank you. And you can also grab the egg. You can also grab the paprika at the front. And you can also grab the soda. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Now these two ingredients we're going to finish off with a little, a little later. Okay. So very, very simple technique. You're just mm -hmm. going to whip this mixture. Okay. So I'm going to start by adding half a cup of flour to a bowl. I'm also going to add one whole egg. Now the egg is basically to make the butter nice and heavy. Mm -hmm. Right, simple as that. Next we'll add our cayenne pepper. And last but not least, our soda water. Soda water. Right, so you can purpose actually... Purpose of soda water is? So purpose of soda water is to make the, to make the mixture actually fluffy. Mm -hmm. So what will happen is, I don't know if you've actually seen how the English do their fish. It's normally mm -hmm. coated in almost something that looks like a casing over the over yes, the fish. Yes, yes. So that's the texture we're looking for. So mm -hmm. the soda water will manage to make sure that it puffs up, mm -hmm. basically almost creating an effect like baking powder would. Mm -hmm. And then of course the egg and the flour will make sure that the butter is also nice and thick so that it forms a nice beautiful crust. Mm -hmm. Right, so we're going to add that in small amounts. And we're basically looking for almost a pancake butter. Mm -hmm. So it also should be nice and thick. So very important to mention viewers at home, 
Very important to always add your soda water very, very slowly. Remember, you particularly may want your butter to be very thick in the beginning. And of course, work your way into a more uh, purer and more consistent butter. So be sure not to add too much in the beginning. Because what will happen is you may actually have to add more flour and mm -hmm. more soda, which means you'll have too much of the too mixture. Much. And because we can't actually reuse this mixture again, you'll have It'll to throw it away. Exactly. Okay. Right, so we're just going to keep adding. And you'll also notice the bit of mixture inside the whisk will continue yes, to break sure, down as sure we continue. It's breaking down on its own. Exactly. Right, so as you continue to mix that, we'll very, very importantly begin to heat up some oil in a pan. Now the essence of heating your oil a little earlier is to make sure that the butter does not get any time to sit. Remember, you actually need to work very, very fast, especially when making any butters with particular uh, any particular butter that you add soda or even beer, just Why? to make sure that you don't actually lose the bubbles. Oh. See what happens is as the mixture continues to sit, the bubbles will disappear, mm -hmm. and what happens is the mixture will not puff up as we want it to. Okay. Yeah. That's a lesson learned. That's a lesson learned, yeah? Yes. Right, and as she continues to do that, very important to always remember, season your butter very, very lightly. This is, of course, to make sure that the texture of your butter is not also very, very flat, and you also have a little bit of flavor to it. Mm -hmm. And you can also add to that some black pepper cones, and this is basically just to give it a bit of a kick. Mm -hmm. And, of course, a very small dash of oil. The oil, of course, always gives a nice, beautiful shine to the butter once it comes out of the oil. Okay. Similar to what we did a little earlier in our previous episode when we used the honey. Mm -hmm. Gives it a nice, beautiful shine. shine. Yeah. Yes, I remember. Perfect. So, of course, very important to mention, while you're going to be doing this particular dish, always make sure that you have a bit of some paper or some kitchen towel on the side. Mm -hmm. This is basically to aid you in draining the oil and, of course, allowing for your oil to continue to drain very, very slowly before mm -hmm. you proceed to plate. But we will, of course, be pairing this with a very, very simple salad that I will, of course, introduce a little later in the show. Okay. So as you can be able to see, remember the ribbon stage we worked on a little yes. earlier? You can you be able to see it actually enough, holds at the top. Forms. Exactly. Yes. Right, so once that is done, you can mm -hmm. proceed to remove your whisk. Now, once you've finished your butter mm -hmm. and you made sure that the consistency is right, mm -hmm. very important to make sure that you have some kitchen paper to drain your fish on once it comes out of the oil. Okay. So always have that nice and handy. And then next up, very simply, we are going to continue to coat the fish. Mm -hmm. So as we did initially, you're just going to lift the fish and allow it to drain the, soy, drain sauce, all the soy sauce and then proceed to add it into the butter. Okay. So we are going to do one piece at a time. Mm -hmm. And I'm also going to grab a, neck, a second pair of tongs of which I'm going to move the fish from the butter to the oil. Okay. So you can begin by adding the first piece. And now, as I mentioned a little earlier as well, if you're going to be working with beer butter or any particular soda butters, be, be sure, sure to make sure not to wait too long. So remember, so remember this, this should actually be mixed as soon as or very close to the point that you're going to be adding it to the oil. And of course, always make sure that your oil is also heated up nicely before you proceed. Because what happens is, if your oil is not too hot, uh, your mixture will of course separate as soon as it hits the oil, which will of course mean that you'll have to begin the process once more. And remember also to make sure that if your oil is as well very, very hot, it will of course color the fish very, very quickly, which means the fish will be raw on the inside. And cooked on the outside. And then cooked on the outside. Mm -hmm. So one simple technique I like to use is I just scoop a little bit of the butter with a spoon mm -hmm. and I just drop it in the center of the, of the pot. Remember, that's the hottest point. Yes. So you, you count till about three. If it actually begins to float, then you're ready to continue. The oil is perfect. Okay. Right, so I'm just going to take out this first piece and add it to the oil. Of course, always allow for it to drain any excess butter. Mm -hmm. And you can actually hold your bowl closest to the oil. That way you make sure not to make a mess. Mm -hmm. And then just simply lay that right in the center of your pan. And you can allow that to begin to cook. Mm -hmm. Of course, very importantly, if you're going to be doing this on a very, very small pan, always allow for the first piece to cook nicely, making sure that, of course, it has a nice room to cook in. Else, uh, or otherwise, it could actually affect the, the outcome of the, of the butter. 
Also always make sure that your oil is also at a very, very constant temperature. So once you get your oil to the highest point, make sure to not adjust the heat at that particular stage because it could actually also change the texture of the dish once it's done. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to give this a quick check. I'm just going to lift that very mm -hmm. lightly and as you can see, nice, beautiful, even color. Yes. So you can, of course, just proceed to turn that over. And as you can see, the color is a little more even on the bottom. Yes. So very, very important to make sure to always play with the, play with the piece of fish or any particular items that you're cooking this particular process because mm -hmm. it can actually color very quickly on one side. So always be sure to move it around to the pan a few turning, times. Yeah, give it as many turns as possible. Mm -hmm. But of course, be very, very gentle, of course, not to lift it too high because it could slip and you could actually burn yourself with the oil. So very important that if you're going to do so, maybe you don't want to do it as I did by touching it by hand. Yes, I was so actually can, about to ask, hey, uh -huh. we'll go people to Jamaica. Now, okay, of course what happens is if you're going to hold it for anywhere between two to three seconds, you may of course not feel the heat. But I would not suggest that you try this until you've of leave course built something or leave it to the professional. Yes. All right, so this is almost done. We're also going to proceed to make the second piece in a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to lift that off the heat for you to be able to get a picture from the camera. As you can see, it should actually be almost the color of the table. So it shouldn't be too dark and shouldn't be too light. light. And once that's done, very simply give it a bit of a shake. Mm -hmm. Allow the excess oil to drip out first mm -hmm. because then you also don't want to waste all your oil on the parchment paper or on your serviettes. Yes. Right, so once that's done and your oil is pretty much not dripping anymore from your spoon or from your tongs, proceed to sit that on the side. Mm -hmm. And we're basically going to do the same thing for the second, second piece. piece. Yep. So just always move it around the butter, making sure that it's evenly coated. Mm -hmm. And of course, allow any excess to drip to very off. gently. Yes. And this particular process will always have the same consistent butter on the whole surface right through. Yes. Right, once more into the oil very gently. Mm. And once your fish is beautifully coated on both sides and mm -hmm. golden brown once more, mm -hmm. We're going to proceed to remove from the heat, of course, allowing it to drain the to excess drain oil. The oil. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And right up until the point your fish is beautifully drained, we'll do mm -hmm. as we did for the first piece. Put it on and the allow it to set on to the side to continue to drain very, very gently. Okay. But of course, before we proceed on to the salad, we will take a very, very short break to clean up the station. And when we do come back, you definitely want to see the very simple salad that we'll be pairing with this very simple dish. So see you in a little while. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. If you're just tuning in, we've just pretty much finished the first process of the cooking of the fish. Now we are now going to jump into the last and final part of the plating, but we are going to be finishing off this simple dish. So Nina, what you begin to do is you're going mm -hmm. to help me make a very, very simple tartar sauce. Okay. So for that, you're going to require a few ingredients. Mm -hmm. But because I'm also going to be making a very simple salad, I'm going to grab this and have them on the side. Mm -hmm. So you can, of course, begin by grabbing the mayonnaise and the onions. And you can proceed to mix those in the bowl in front of you. Okay. And while you do so, I'm also going to chop up some of the ingredients that you'll be adding to that, which, of course, is the gherkins. Mm -hmm. So what do the gherkins do? Now, the gherkins are particularly... Actually, it is a tradition that a tartar sauce or any particular English-style uh, fish cooked in this particular design is served with a bit of tartar sauce. Mm -hmm. 
and the main components of the tartar sauce would be a bit of some hard-boiled eggs, some gherkins, mm. some uh, mayonnaise and some chopped up onions. Mm -hmm. But because we are keeping it nice and healthy and of course trying to keep it, uh, keep, it keep the dish nice and easy, mm -hmm. and of course we're also not focusing on having many carbs in this particular dish, yes. we're going to omit the eggs for this particular process. Mm -hmm. But of course the original process will incorporate a few more ingredients but this is a particular easy one that most of you can be able to try out at home. It has, of course, omitted such ingredients as capers, uh, anchovy fillets, and all the other fanciness. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be making a very, very simple, simple one for one. this particular recipe. Okay. But, but uh, for, gherk, for this reason, gherkin is a particular signature for a tartar sauce. Mm -hmm. Right, so... So aside from this, should I add anything else? No, I'm going to give you the gherkins as well. Mm -hmm. So this is also going to go into that same bowl. And as I said, this is of course a simple take on the original recipe. Mm -hmm. uh, for the viewers at home, you can of course be able to find the original recipe online. It will of course entail adding a bit more ingredients that we've used or that are used for this particular uh, recipe. But because we're also taking a very simple turn on the original dish, we are of course going to keep it nice and simple of course enabling most of you to be able to replicate the dish from your very own home kitchen. Mm -hmm. Right, so a bit of salt and a bit of some black pepper cones. And while you do so, I'm going to proceed to prepare our cucumber and our tomato. So this is a very, very simple salad that can accompany some pieces of fish. Mm -hmm. And it entails just a little bit of some fresh tomatoes mm -hmm. and a bit of some fresh... Uh, a bit of some fresh uh, cucumber. Mm -hmm. So proceed to begin by seeding, deseeding your tomatoes. Of course, this of course means taking out the seeds from the tomato. Okay. So I'm just going to proceed to finish that off. Right, making sure of course to get all the seeds out because this will particularly taint or give a very, very bad uh, illusion to your salad. I was actually about to ask why. Uh -huh. Now what happens is with the, when you're serving a salad, on most occasions you will have situations that the seeds will of course continue to ooze out water. So once you take out that inner core of the tomato, you actually make sure that you don't have any water that will continue to drain into your salad. Mm -hmm. So once you have only the skin part, this will, of course, keep the salad nice and fresh, and you won't have that bed of water underneath your salad once you mm -hmm. plate. Yeah. So very simply, once your tomatoes are cleaned out, proceed to put those in a bowl. And we're also going to clean our cucumber. So I'm actually going to just slice chunks of the skin off as well. Remember, the cucumber membrane as well contains quite a bit of water. Mm -hmm. And as I said, if you're trying to keep your salad nice and clean, be sure to take Shrimp out the insides feet. of your tomato mm -hmm. and your cucumber. Mm -hmm. Right, so this I'm just going to split up into some nice, beautiful batonet strips. Mm -hmm. Now, batonet, of course, this is a very, very simple uh, concept. It basically refers to different cuts of vegetables. So you do find different styles of chopping vegetables depending on what size they are. So for this particular uh, size of, of a cut, you would call a, we'd be calling that a batonet. So it's a mm -hmm. very, very simple term. Mm -hmm. So I'm just That's going to... That's a simple term. Yes, it is a very, very simple term. Mm -hmm. But you can, of course, be able to research on this and many other beautiful different cuts. You will get such cuts as julienne, chiffonade. So these are basically terminologies that we use in the kitchen to refer to a particular this style like of chopping. This is like studying science. So it actually sounds very scientific at this stage, yes. yeah? Yes. So it's a very, very simple one. Next up, I'm also going to add some fresh fennel. So this is a particularly very, very good hub. It goes very, very nicely with fish. Mm -hmm. And this we're going to be adding to oh. our simple tata sauce. Mm -hmm. So you already have your salt in there and your pepper, which already gives it a bit of flavor. Mm -hmm. And if you can be able to get the scent of the of the fennel, it actually mm. carries a nice, beautiful yes, aroma with it. Yes, really nice. And it actually also gives a very, very beautiful, fragrant finish to your to your simple tartar sauce. Mm. Right. So very, very simple. Once that is complete, of course, very important to always remember to season your salad. So I'm going to sprinkle in a bit of salt. And of course, we'll crush in some black peppercorns. So this is just to make sure that your salad isn't bland and tasteless. Mm -hmm. 
So you can also grab a bit of the vinegar and you can add about half of that into the bowl. Perfect. So this you don't really need to do much to it. It's basically just to dress the vegetables. Mm -hmm. Gives it a nice beautiful aftertaste. And I'll actually allow you to try one of those. Just give it a taste and feel the difference. Mm. So it actually gives it a nice beautiful it's fragrance nice. and it just balances the flavor. Mm, yes. So one particular good addition to any particular vegetables that you may want to chop up and serve, add mm. a little bit of some apple cider vinegar. It also just masks that bland taste of mm. the cucumber it and has the tomato. A, is it a before taste or an after taste? An after taste. Yes. Yeah. That's the one, yeah? <laughs> so very, very simple. Now, of course, this has take, this will of course take us to the last and final part of plating our dish. But before I proceed, I'm also going to chop up a bit of some fresh coriander leaves. And this I'm basically going to toss with the cucumber and the tomato. And what happens is this also elevates the color a little bit, so you'll be able to see that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So these are basically just techni techniques of finishing off simple salads. Mm -hmm. As you can be able to see, it'll actually look nice and bright on the yeah, plate. Yeah, it looks nice. Yep. Right, so very simply, we're going to proceed to plate. Now I'm going to use a very, very simple method of plating for this dish. Mm -hmm. Of course, very important to also have a bit of lemon when serving some fish. So I'm going to begin by laying a bed of vegetables on the plate. So this I'm just going to arrange randomly on the plate. So of course taking your time to just find any bit of balance you remember uh, once especially when you're plating yes. it's always good to it, give it, a bit it, of emphasis it boosts your it, appetite exactly right so cucumber on the plate a bit of your tomato wedges mm -hmm. so you can just scatter those all around the center of the plate like that simple as that mm -hmm. next up we're also going to proceed to plate our fish so always uh, look for the nicest side to serve we look we call that the show side mm -hmm. so that you're pretty much going to lay those right over your simple salad of course you can actually use your tongue to break uh, to break off any the particular crust. bits of the no it's actually the cooked butter oh. so because this also looks uh, it doesn't look very good on the plate you can just proceed to break any excess pieces such as this and you can throw those away mm -hmm. And once more, toss your fish around, making sure to get the more the appreciatable side. side, yeah? So that can go right over the top like that. Mm -hmm. Very, very simple. Finish off by adding your lemon wedge right over the side oh. like that. So you see what happens is you're playing with colors yes. and the illusion of different shapes actually <laughs> makes your plate look very, very classy. Yes. Simple as that. Now. Of course, we also do have a bit of ketchup that we have on the side. Mm -hmm. So one particular technique I can show you is you can actually just place a dollop of the ketchup on the side of the plate. Mm -hmm. And using the underside of your spoon, you can actually just push that right around the side like that. I've always wondered how that I've is always done. always wondered how that happens. So you actually yes. just smear it on the side of the plate. Mm -hmm. And of course, once that's finished, very importantly, always remember to have a bit of that beautiful tartar sauce to serve with. So you can, of course, serve this on the side, or you can actually just scoop a bit of that and serve that on the side like that. And that, Nina, is my very simple take on buttered fish. Wow. Simple, yeah? So nice. Looks appetizing. Very appetizing. And you can agree that most of the ingredients so we use are easy to find. Yes. And you can actually just turn the plate around. You see, from whichever angle you look at it, it the looks, color does hit you. Um, it looks fresh. Everything looks alive. Mm, the lemon wedge, of course, attractive. brings a nice, beautiful look to the dish. Yes. And of course, very importantly, ladies and gentlemen, Especially if you're looking at very simple and hearty and healthy recipes, always try and work with simplicity. I, of course, omitted some of the ingredients on particular items such as the tartar sauce because they're actually going to really give the plate a bit, a bit of weight and, of course, elevate the cost effect. Mm -hmm. But because we're also working on keeping it nice and friendly, family friendly as well, and also pocket friendly, yes. I believe this is as simple as you can go on a very, very simple it's buttered really fish. It really looks nice. It really looks and attractive. Exactly. And another thing I could share as well, 
You see, for the butter that we made, you can actually use, you can actually grab a bottle of beer, mm -hmm. and it'll actually give you more bubbles. Oh. So what happens? Other is than the soda, using the tonic water. Yeah, other than using tonic water, you can actually use Guinness. You can use a Tasca, maybe even a can of beer. Any particular brand, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Now, what happens with beer? It also carries a bit, a bit more flavor than, and it also has a bit of sugar. It will also build the flavor a little better than what the soda did. So, of course, ladies and gentlemen, this, of course, brings us to the last and final part of the show. As I mentioned, very, very many different techniques you can use to alter this very simple dish. But, of course, with Nina's approval, I believe we've managed to convince you that you can actually make a very, very simple buttered fish from home using the most easiest to find local ingredients closest to you. And you can actually be able to serve this to even your kids or even Anyone. the elderly. And mm -hmm. they'll actually be able to enjoy it's, this much easier. Yeah, it's really nice. Right, so ladies and gentlemen, without, without, further, without further ado, we'll of course bid you farewell at this stage. But we'll remind you to of course share your comments, your views, or any particular suggestions pertaining the show or pertaining the dish of the day through our Facebook page, that's Brand Plus TV Kenya. And remember, if you missed out on this and many other episodes that we've had in the recent past, you can be able to also catch up on this and many more through our Brand Plus TV channel on YouTube. That's Brand Plus TV Kenya. But for this, we of course will bid you farewell now, wishing you a lovely night, God's blessings, and see you soon.